You think like some peptides, like uh, semaglutide, fucking effective for fat loss. That, that one scared me, right? Because I became a different person when it came to appetite. Mate, I went to an airport lounge before flying business, I ate half an apple. That On the flight, I said no thanks to food because I genuinely wasn't hungry. Really? My mindset changed, bro. Tay, after dinner. Because don't changed. they say like that it's not just for fat loss though. If you wanted to like stop some, anything, it'd help. I can't comment on that, but uh, I knew my protein intake was only like 50 grams for the day before. So I forced on a protein shake when I wasn't hungry and I was ill for an hour. Oof. That shit shuts you down. So I think that if my goal was just fat loss, amazing. But do you think then maybe it should be, it should be more readily available? Let's say your BMI is 40 plus. If someone emailed me today and says, hi James, I'm at the point I'm thinking about giving up. I've got a disabled son. My oh, wife died yeah. two years ago. I'm 150 kg. My response was, don't join my academy, go get a Zempit. Because you need to lose 30 kilograms to prove to yourself you're not going to die. Do you reckon that solves the problem though? Yeah, because they're, they're, they're a problem of giving getting them. Let's say you, know I mean? uh, you we bump into someone in the street, they've been in a motorbike accident and their leg's hanging off. Hmm. You get your belt and put a tourniquet on. You're not going to go, oh, is that a bit tight on his leg? I know, it's a bit different though. No, nah, because at 150 kilograms, you're, you're going straight towards death. Yeah, but, but in two years, if he's gone from normal to 150 kg, he's going off the graph. But by taking it, there are going to be some health concerns for him on his Empix and the glutide. But getting him down to 120, we say, hey, mate, you're coming off the medication. Now that's, yeah. Yeah, and if he balloons up, we give him the medication again. But yeah. ultimately, if someone's going to die from the thing they're doing, you need to intervene. And that's you what know, You know fat loss, you boys better than me, like, but... Like the habitual habits of probably eating and food choice, how much does that come into it versus like genetically it's something I think that... Genetically, I think there's always going to be like some sort of difference, but it's mad how like a lot of people eat when they're feeling a type of way emotionally. And if you don't address that, I think it's always going to be a problem. Even if you do take that, I think it's going to fix the problem for a certain time, but I think it's most likely going to go back up because unless that thing has been addressed, like you just said. Yeah. Do you think then that a massive part of fat loss or weight loss for anyone is the emotional change as much as it is the... Bro, 100%. And it's also triggers, right? Let's say... Um, yeah, for sure. We know a guy called Elliot. He won't mind being in this. Like, he got gout last week. When we met him, fit, good-looking, healthy guy. He's now, no offense, Elliot, in a terrible bit of health. And I said to Luke, send him here. I'll build him a bedroom up here. I'll train him. I'll save his life. But he has to come here, he has to leave his girlfriend at home because he might, he might come home wanting to do everything right. His girlfriend goes, oh, I've had the most stressful day and brings an Indian yeah. takeaway. What's he going to go? No, put that in the bin. You know what I mean? So sometimes it's people around them. But this is the thing, like, you think there's two, two things that come to mind with that. Like, yeah, okay, we need to build, build a healthier habit or build, build a better habit than what you're doing right now. But then with the other side of that, like how do you get someone to make a change to not surround themselves with people that are having a negative effect on them? Because that far goes beyond fat loss, you know what I mean? If you're doing unhealthy things kind because of the people you're it. around. You kind of have to force it. You really have to hold them accountable to be like, why did this happen? Yeah. You, you, you see why, and they're like, okay, well, you need to change that environment. You've got two options here. You either carry on, you don't change anything, so you don't change, or you change something, and it's completely up to them. And you've got to put it on them. You've got to yeah. give them like, almost like tough love, only when you've got to like to a stage mm. where you've actually got a decent relationship with them. But I think it's interesting that at what point do people, you know, find it bad enough to make a change. But imagine this, right, as a counter argument, imagine yeah. instead of all of that, yeah. you just say, hey, Monday morning, 9 a.m., come to a GP, you're both getting 0.1 millilitres of some of the Mate, but imagine no willpower, no intervention, no exercise, you increase all their health markers, comorbidities, you increase everything, then when you get them to lose all the fat, you then say, hey, if you want to sustain this and you want to keep this quality of life, you need to make changes to your life. I just think it's just a, another shortcut we're all doing to avoid the thing you really have to do. You know, so it's, then it's just like, then everyone it's becomes weak, pathetic, and don't fucking do anything. And, you and, and I completely agree. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a balance to it. But, mm. if, but the, if we look at the, so obesity has been rising for what, like 30, 40 years. Something has to be a shortcut. But I think that there's, like, obesity is one thing. Like I said, when you extract the obesity or fat loss out of it and just think about general changes that people want to make to... to <laughs> Sorry. <there's> like, <laughs> say, that, yeah. say that point again. <laughs> no, I think it's just, not, it's not just even fat loss that comes into play here. It's like, if anyone wanted to make any change outside of, like, you know, their bank balance, their lifestyle, yeah. how they're living their lifestyle, like people's breaking point or decision to make change 
differs. It's like I spoke to someone, uh, I was saying that we started this challenge on Monday. Yeah. And I said to the people that started, 20% of people left the group after the first, before the first day started. Yeah. Because they like, it was a free challenge. They liked the idea yeah. of getting more mobile or improving yeah. their health, but they're not prepared to put in the work. So at that point, it's not, it doesn't matter what you put in front of someone, if yeah. they're not prepared to take action, then. Yeah, it's, that's weird. You know, I've had a lot of that as well. You know that almost like hit of like dopamine when you're like, gonna, you feel like you, 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 the thought of achieving it, feel you get a hit, you get a dopamine hit. And you think that's enough for people. Yeah, and then you stop, you don't actually put in the work. Yeah. It's probably one of the hardest things as like a coach. And they don't stay around to feel guilty about no. not continuing. You know when you're like, what point is it when someone has to change? I, I actually think a lot of people don't realize what it feels to be good. So mm. they don't actually know. So they and don't know what they're missing. Yeah. That's a good way of they looking at it. So you have like to that. force, you have to force them. Yeah. And they're like, oh my fucking God, Darren, I've never felt like this before. I'm like, I fucking know you haven't felt like this, which is why I'm forcing you to do it. So if you, either of you, don't do that because that's gone off now. If either of you were to take semaglutide, that's semaglutide. That's the Zen pit. I've never seen it. If you were to ever actually do it, I think you completely change your opinion because I went into it hating it. I went into it hating it. I can't explain this, right? For two weeks, I felt like every single person I saw growing up that was in shape, like, you know when we go to dinner, me and you eat till we're sick, and we see those people around us, like Alima, they eat slow, they're done, they yeah, leave food yeah, on the plate. Yeah. I became that person mm. within two days. Yeah. And so suddenly, there was part of me that romanticized the idea of having control over an area of my life I've never had control. Mm. I cannot explain, and look, I don't get paid promoting this, I actually still don't think people should take this, but you can't overlook the fact that I had a completely yeah. different relationship with food the second I took it. Mm. And that, that felt empowering. Like to be able, Tay, me and Tay have been going out for fucking years. She saw a different person. In overnight. Yeah. But then like coming back to what you were saying, Duran, like the dopamine hit side of things yeah. from, from change. Cause I think that's super interesting that people can just yeah. have that touch point of change once and then not need to feel it again. Because yeah. like anything else, when you get a dopamine hit, you go, oh, I want another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. yeah and you continue that, but why, does, why is it that when people are looking for dopamine or just from initiating change, they don't continue in with it? Is it the hard work aspect of it? In the UK, what, 15% of the people have a gym membership? 15%, yeah, right? So imagine the amount of people out there that haven't had a win in years, anywhere in their life, yeah. right? So, they go to a job, they get shit on by people above them, they've got no career progressions, they've got a mortgage, they split up with their partner, they've got two kids that depend on them, they can't afford to travel, they can't afford to move out, they can't afford to do this, they don't have a gym membership, they're unhealthy, they've got the same routine. They join that challenge, and the first day they see stuff, they go, I cannot bear to fail at something else. Mm. I think that's why they leave. Yeah. I think they haven't had a win in so many years, they genuinely don't want to yeah. put themselves at the risk that they lose. That's a good point, yeah. Fear and I think, and, and that, through failure, yeah. They, they go, if I remove myself from this, there's no chance this can happen. And this is the best bit, yeah? Like, a lot of clients that do that, they actually almost fail on purpose because they're actually more used to dealing with that instead of pushing through and actually succeeding. So they're, they're more used to failing, so they fail because they know how to come out of that again. It gives them an excuse to start exactly. drinking, start exactly. eating. Yeah. They get to go back to their vice because they fail. 